In this module we will tackle capacitance and dielectrics. Capacitors are devices that store electric energy in an electric field produced from charges that are accumulated on the positive plate or anode and the negative plate or cathode. The plates are separated by a small gap that is non-conductive material such as a vacuum of space. The charges are accumulated when it is connected to an electric potential source such as a battery. Capacitors are affected by the voltage, electrical potential, applied and size of the capacitor i.e. plate size. The effect that capacitors induce is called capacitance. The magnitude of the electric field as shown on the figure is proportional to the amount of charges stored on the plates. We recall the equation of electric potential in relation to the electric field given by equation 2. The electric potential is also proportional to the electric field and by transitive property we can say that the charge stored is proportional to the voltage or electric potential of the battery. Capacitance is then described as the amount of charge stored in a capacitor per voltage. Unit of capacitance is Farad, F, from Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday's main discoveries include the principles on electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, and electrolysis. One farad is equal to one coulomb over one volt. The figure on the left is an idealized model of the direction of the electric field. Much closer to the real capacitors is the figure on the right where we see some of the fields going outward and others curved on the sides. These fields that are on the sides are called fringing. In dealing with capacitors we ignore the fringing effects and consider the idealized model. We recall that the electric field can be calculated using the Gauss equation 5. For a plate with constant area and producing constant electric field we have equation 6. For the charged enclosed we consider the surface charge density given as equation 7. Substituting this back to equation 6 and we get an expression for the electric field as shown in equation 8. Now we equate the equation of voltage in equation 2 to the electric field in equation 8 and we get equation 9. Taking this equation into consideration we write an expression for capacitance based on this and we get an expression of capacitance as function of a constant and dimension of the plates. The equation shows that capacitance depends on the geometry, area of plate A and distance between plates D. Here we have parallel plate capacitors connected to a battery. We see the charge accumulated on the plates and we see the dependency on the dimension of the plates. We see that the amount of charge is dependent on the electric potential or battery source. The greater the voltage the larger the charges that can be stored. Here we demonstrate the discharging process of capacitors by connecting it to a light bulb as shown by the animation. 
Here we see that after charging the amount of charges accumulates on the plates. When it is disconnected and connected to the light bulb we see that the charges on the plates migrate towards the light turns on. Over time the amount charged is reduced being converted to heat and light and starts to dim. Here we have a sample problem. What is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor with metal plates, each of area 1 meter squared, separated by 1 millimeter? We recall the equation for capacitance as shown by equation 10 and we get that it is about 8.85 nanofarad. To determine the charge stored by this capacitor if a 3 kV is applied we use equation 4 and rewrite it to solve for the charge Q. We get that the stored charge is 2.66 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs. Here we have a sample problem. Two concentric spherical conducting shells are separated by vacuum. The inner shell has total charge positive Q and outer radius RA, and the outer shell has charge negative Q and inner radius RB find the capacitance of these spherical capacitors. So we use the equation of capacitance as given by equation 4. We also recall the electric potential between two points equation 11. Incorporating this to the capacitance equation we get an expression for capacitance as shown by equation A. When charging plates, the electric potential energy in a charged capacitor is just equal to the amount of work required to charge it, which is to separate opposite charges and place them on different conducting plates. When the capacitor is discharged, the stored is dispelled as work done by the electrical forces. To determine the electric potential energy of a charged capacitor we determine the work done in charging it. The final charge of the capacitor and the final electric potential is given by equation 4. If we let Q and V as the charge and potential energy at an intermediate state during the charging process, the relationship based on equation 4 is given as equation 11. At this stage the work done by this charge is given as equation 12. We get the work done by integrating equation 12 and evaluate it from 0 to Q as shown here. Equation 13 is the amount of work needed to charge a capacitor. This amount of work in charging is also the same amount in discharging the plates from an initial Q to 0. This is also the expression for potential energy for capacitors which is shown in equation 14. This electric potential energy for the capacitor is similar to the elastic potential energy as shown by equation 15. The fraction of the capacitor is similar to a spring constant and we see that the charge Q is like the elongation X of an elastic material. We also note that the potential energy for a capacitor depends on the physical characteristics of the capacitor so we can increase the amount of charge stored by increasing its capacitance C. Dielectrics are non-conducting material sandwiched between the conducting plates. The presence of a dielectric material increases the possible maximum electric potential between the capacitor plates. This also increases the amount of charge stored. The capacitance becomes greater when dielectric is present between plates. Dielectric constant is the ratio of capacitance with over without the dielectric material as shown in the equation 16. Here are some dielectric constants for different materials. We see that in vacuum it is equal to 1 and substances like water it is 80. The dielectric constant is a dimensionless parameter.
when the total charge of the capacitor is constant Q which suggests that before and after the addition of the dielectric material has this relationship as shown by equation 17. We can then relate the dielectric constant as a ratio of the electric potential before and after the addition of the dielectric material as shown in equation 18. The non-conductive dielectric material when it is exposed to charged plates rearranges the orientation of its charges that is oriented with the opposite charges due to force of attraction. We see that the electric field that crosses from the positive plate towards the negative plate is reduced. The reoriented charges on the dielectric material are called induced charges. The dielectric material still remains to be neutral since the number of positive and negative charges are still the same but only reoriented. This process is called polarization. When there is no charge in the plates, the atoms inside the dielectric material are randomly oriented. When an electric field is introduced the molecules inside the dielectric material reorganize themselves creating order. This reorientation of molecules in the presence of an electric field is again called polarization. As mentioned earlier, the presence of a dielectric material reduces the electric field and when the charge Q is at constant then the dielectric constant can be expressed in terms of the ratio of the electric field before and after as shown here in equation 19. Deriving an expression for capacitance with dielectric material. As the dielectric material is full of charges that are induced then the surface of the material is referred to as induced surfaces with density denoted as sigma i. Its relation to the electric field is given by sigma as the surface charge density of the surface of the parallel plates by equation 20. Taking consideration of the induced surface charge we take the difference between the surface charge densities as shown here in the numerator of equation 21. Substituting equation 20 and 21 to equation 19 we have an expression for the dielectric constant and taking it further by rewriting it. So we get an expression for induced surface charge density. We have equation 22. We see that if the dielectric constant is large enough then the surface charge density of both surfaces are equal. The electric field and the potential difference with the presence of dielectric potential would be smaller compared to the ones in vacuum. Considering the constant epsilon, the permittivity of dielectric material is expressed shown in equation 23. Recall the expression for the electric field equation 20 we rewrite it to equation 24 which is a function of the permittivity of dielectric material. From the expression of dielectric constant as a ratio of capacitance before and after we derive the expression for capacitors with dielectric material. So after manipulating the equation we get an expression for capacitance for capacitors with dielectric materials. Here we have a sample problem. A typical flash for a point-and-shoot camera uses a capacitor of about 200 microfarad. For letter A, if the potential difference between the capacitor plates is 100 volts, that is, 100 volt is placed across the capacitor, how much energy is stored in the capacitor? For letter B, if the dielectric used in the capacitor were a 0.01 mm thick sheet of nylon, what would be the surface area of the capacitor plates? For letter A, to determine the energy is stored in the capacitor let us examine first the given parameters. 
given the electric potential is 100 volts and the capacitance of 200 microfarad we can use the equation for the potential energy for capacitors shown in equation 14. Substituting the given values we get that the potential energy stored by this capacitor is 1 joule. 1 J stored energy is quite large for a camera. A flash typically lasts about 0.001 seconds. If we calculate the power of this we would get 1 kilowatts of power from a flash of the camera. For letter B. To determine the surface area of the capacitor plates we examine the given values. We have electric potential at 100 voltage and the capacitance of 200 microfarad and now the distance D which is 0.01 millimeter. We look at the dielectric constant for a nylon and it is 3.4. The equation that we will use is equation 25 and rearranging it to solve for the area. Note to take into consideration the units to check if we do obtain a parameter that is an area. We see that the area would be about 66.5 meters squared. This size would not fit a handheld camera and that is why these cameras have advanced capacitor technology that uses special types of dielectrics. Electric field energy in capacitors. When charging capacitors, the work done in moving the charges onto the plates moves against the electric field between the plates. The energy stored between the plates is given as potential energy density which is given as equation 26. We further manipulate this by substituting the expression for capacitance and electric potential, we rewrite the energy density as shown here in equation 27. Sample problem. What is the magnitude of the electric field required to store one joule of electric potential energy in a volume of one meter cube in vacuum? And if the field of magnitude is ten times larger than that, how much energy is stored per cubic meter? We use the equation for electrical potential density to get the electric field. Here the energy density is just the energy per volume which is one cubic meter. Using equation 27 and rewriting it we get the electric field value. To determine what would happen to the energy density when E is 10 times we look at equation 27. We see that the potential energy density becomes 100 times larger or it is 100 joules per meter cube. That is it for now and I hope you learned something new today. For questions and comments you may send them to diyeslearningstuff at gmail.com. You may review the slide on YouTube at diese at diese learning stuff. Note, please do not forget to use your school email. Also write your complete name and class section. Thank you for listening and see you next module.